In this video, I would like to derive out these kinematic equations uh, that I wrote down right here. And one thing to note about these kinematic equations are they're only valid if you have a constant constant acceleration. If your acceleration is, let's say, a function of time, uh, if it's a function of velocity, or if it's a function of, let's say, position, then you cannot use these kinematic equations. You have to, you have to go about solving that problem uh, in a different manner. So, let's, uh, let's get started deriving out these three equations we see here. And we're gonna we're, first we're gonna drive out this first uh, first equation, and we're gonna use this equation that the acceleration is equal to our derivative of velocity with respect to time. So we have a is equal to dv dt, and what we want to do is we want to separate our variables and we want to integrate. So if we move this dt over to the other side, we get a times dt is equal to dv and now we want to integrate so we're going to integrate the dt and we're going to integrate our dv now this a since we've said that it's a constant acceleration this a can be taken outside of our integral and and it doesn't need to be inside an integral like that but because it's constant, we can take it outside of our integral. And now we just have to come up with the bounds on both of these, these integrals. Now, this integral has a dt. So we want, to, uh, we want to evaluate from a final time, which I'm going to call t, to an initial time. And I'm just going to call this initial time 0. And... We, we use zero because that's sort of where we start, and when we start, it's time zero. So this is pretty general, and we can we just take this integral from time t to zero. Now for the velocity, we want to integrate from a final velocity, which is unknown, and I'm going to just denote it with v, uh, and we want to evaluate this to an initial velocity, which is v naught, uh, v zero. And the reason this is not zero is because our velocity can have an initial velocity. When we start looking at something, it can already be moving at a certain speed. It, it certainly can be zero if something starts from rest, then our initial velocity is zero, but it doesn't need to be. So if we, we evaluate this integral, we get um, a times t, which is evaluated from t to 0, is equal to v, which is evaluated from v to v naught. And now, if we plug in our bounds, we get at is equal to v minus v naught. And if we move this v naught to the other side of the equation, we're going to get this first equation right here. We're going to get v is equal to uh, v naught plus at. So, so this is the first equation, and let's go ahead and try to figure out how we get this second equation. And to get this second equation, let's also use this velocity equation right here. So we've used this equation, and now we're going to use this velocity. So our velocity is equal to dx dt, and we have just... In, in this last, when we derived out our first equation, we, we now have an expression for velocity. We have v is equal to v naught plus at. So if we plug this v into this side, so we have uh, v naught plus at is equal to dx dt, and we want to use the same method that we uh, did for this first derivation and we want to separate our uh, variables and we want to integrate. So we have um, v naught plus at times dt 
is equal to dx. And we want to evaluate this integral from, from this is dt, so we want to go from a final time, zero, uh, final time t to an initial time of zero. And we want to go from a final position, because this is a dx, a final position of x to an initial position of x naught. And again, this x naught does not have to be zero. This can be an initial offset. Uh, it's, and it most of the time it is zero. A lot of the time it is zero, I should say. But it doesn't need to be zero. And so if we evaluate this integral, we have v naught times t plus one half a t squared, which is evaluated from t to zero, is equal to x, which is evaluated from x to x naught. And if we plug in this t and this zero, so we evaluate this expression with both of our bounds, we get v naught t plus one half a t squared uh, is equal to x minus x naught. And we can bring this x naught to the other side of the equation. So we get x is equal to x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. And well, what do you know? It's the second equation right here. So, so finally, we just want to uh, figure out how we get this third kinematic equation, which is a uh, velocity and acceleration in distance, and it doesn't involve uh, time. So we're going to use um, this, this uh, equation we have for acceleration. So in this equation, acceleration is equal to the velocity times the derivative of velocity with respect to uh, displacement. And if we, if we use this, acceleration is equal to v times dv dx. We, again, we want to separate our variables. Uh, and we want to integrate. So we get a times dx is equal to v times dv. And now we just need to come up with our bounds. And our bounds are going to be from an initial time, uh, excuse me, an in, uh, a final position which is just x to an initial position, which is x naught. And this veloc velocity is going to be from a final velocity of v to an initial velocity of v naught. Now, if we take this integral, we get, we get a um, times x. And this x is evaluated from x to x zero. And this is equal to uh, v squared divided by 2, which is evaluated from a an final velocity to an initial velocity. So v to v0. Now, if we plug in, plug in these bounds, we get we have a times x minus x0 is equal to uh, v squared divided by 2 minus v naught squared divided by 2. And to simplify things a little bit, let's m multiply both sides by 2 uh, just to get rid of that fraction. So we have 2 times a times x minus x naught is equal to v squared minus v naught squared. And again, uh, let's move this v naught squared to the other side of the equation. So our final form is v squared minus v naught squared. Uh, v squared is equal to v naught squared because we've moved this to the other side. Uh, plus 2a times a final position of x minus an initial position of x. 
So there you have it. Uh, in this video, we, we just derived all three of these kinematic equations.